Hi guys, welcome back to my garage. I'm going to do a little quickie video on wiring um, DMM Technologies Dyne 4 to Acorn. We're going to do it on the board and then we'll go out to do it on the bench. I figured we'd do it on the board. It's easier for you to see. Um, the Dyne 4 uses the headers on Acorn. It doesn't use the DB25. So we'll be wiring up here. And there's a couple little things that you've got to uh, pay attention to. Um, the, the Dyne 4 has a DB25 female connector on the front of it. Um, they also, DMM Technologies also makes a flying lead cable now that can go from Dyne 4 to Acorn. So this end of it's already done. If you're not comfortable uh, wiring a DB25 connector, uh, whether it's solder cups or crimp pin or whatever, just buy the cable. It's easier for you to get it hooked up. There's no chance of you damaging it unless you wire the other end uh, to the wrong thing. So um, the Dyne 4 of note is, will operate between um, 110 volts and 240 volts. Where this makes a difference is the, the size of the motor that you're running. So I would suggest that you contact DMM Technologies so they can get you set up. On the bench, I'm using a very small NEMA 34 motor, so I will be wiring this up to 110 volts. There's a label here that says, caution, voltage between any two terminals must not exceed 240 volts AC. So, we have L1, L2, and we have RST. We're going to run 110 volts. Uh, L1 will be black, L2 will be white, and then I'm running a pair of jumpers up to R and S. L1 and L2 is logic power for the drive. RST is motor power, okay? So, uh, like I said, we're gonna run 110 volts from L1 to L2. Um, black on L1, white on L2. I don't believe it'll make any difference. And then we'll run jumpers up to R and S, 110 volts so we can feed the motor, okay? And uh, this is where the motor plugs in. It, the cable's pre-made. The programming cable goes here, and these have to be programmed. And uh, the encoder cable goes right here on JP3. So programming on JP2, um, encoder cable on JP3. And of course, the signal cable goes on JP4. I'm not gonna get into e-stop contactors and all that stuff feeding this. We're just gonna plug it into the bench. This video is all about getting the control signals from Acorn to the Dyne 4 and getting the motor to turn, okay? Use the, the latest schematic that comes in the Centroid Acorn schematic set. Um, always check for revisions. Uh, DMM Technologies also has a schematic. It differs in that their, their schematic is uh, for their cable. And uh, what's different is we're gonna feed it with five volts, feed the logic. They feed it with 24 volts, but they're going through a 2K uh, ohm dropping resistor. So running 24 volts into that 2K resistor will drop it to five volts, okay? But that is all incorporated in their cable. So just, just uh, I wanted to mention that. So let's get started up here on the board. Now I've got a giant version of the DB25 here so that you can see what we're doing. Um, we don't use all 25 pins. In fact, we only use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, pins of the DB25. This is showing the back of the DB25 connector. This is the back. That's the front, that's the back. This would also be the front of the connector on the DYN4 drive. So, what we have here is we've got Acorn, we've got our control power supply. Recently, Centroid decided to start sending out the dual voltage power supply, so you have 24 volts to Acorn, and you got a five volt output for your drive if you need it, and we're gonna need it. So, um, typically, the 24 volts is yellow, I don't have a yellow marker, it'll be hard for you to see anyway, so I made it red. Our five volts will be blue, okay? So let's get started. I'm using the latest Acorn schematic for Dyne 4. All right, so first things first, let's get power to the drive. This is the only one where there is a jumper. 
you can just make it out right here. There's a jumper, five volts. Okay, so we're gonna take five volts to pins 11 and 22. So here's 11, here's 22. Let's see, I'll do it, uh, how can I do it? I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way. So here's our five volts. I'm gonna take it over. To pin 11. So on that pin, either you're gonna splice out here and then take one wire to pin 11 and then one to 22, or you're gonna try and get two very small wires into that pin 11 and then a jumper over to 22. That's up to you. Um, I would suggest maybe just taking two wires, soldering it to your one lead and shrink tubing it, and you'll have one wire here and one to 22. But in any case, pin 11 and 22 are going to five volts DC. Okay, so I'm gonna check that off, that I've got that. That's our blue, using blue for 24 volts. All right, we also have 24 volts DC. That's going to 14, 15, 16. So I'm using red here. So we'll go 16, double check it, 14, 15, 16, yes, 16. So 16 goes to 24 volts. You can just take that straight to your power supply. So we've got 16. I'm gonna check that off that we've got that. Next one is uh, ground or common. Common is going to one, two, three, four, five, pin five. So we're gonna go like this, pin five. A common. It says minus VDC here, but it's also com. Okay, so we've got that one. Now we've got our uh, alarm signal. I don't have any extra colors here. Hate to use a different color, but I guess we'll just use green, which is normally reserved for chassis ground. All right, so we're going to, for input five right here, which is our uh, drive fault, is going to go to 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we'll go from here, we'll go up, we'll go over, and we'll go down to input, input five. So that's our alarm. Double checking, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, that's done. All right, so we have uh, enable, drive enable. Drive enable is pin 15. So we're gonna come out of here, pin 15. We're gonna go up, we're gonna go over, to H2 enable, EN1, this is enable. Okay, got that one done. Now we've just got step and direction. So we're gonna do ST1 is going to go to 25, 24, 23. So pin 23, I'm gonna come over in 23. 23 is step. I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go over, over to ST1. All right, direction is going from 13, 12, 11, 10. 
So 10, gonna go this way, jump up, jump up, over, jump over to DR1, direction. Let's double check our work. Five volts DC is going to 25, 24, 23, 22, right here. And it's also going from 13, 12, 11, here. Five volts, okay? That's good. Step, that is going from 23. Step to ST1. Direction is going from 13, 12, 13, 12, 11, 10. 10, this is direction. Going there to DR1 on H2. Input 5, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18, going down to input 5. This is uh, dry fault. Okay. That's input 5, and then we got 24 volts, or we've got our common. We've got a common, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's going over to common. All right, that's good. And then we got 24 volts DC in. That's going to 14, 15, 16. 16, it's going over, 24 volts DC. And then we have enable, that's going to 15. Here's our enable, going down, that's it. That's, that's the connection. So that, that's what you need to know. Again, this is the back side of the DB25. And, uh, and here again, here's our connection. So ST1, step 23. DR1, direction, pin 10. Drive fault, pin 18. Enable, pin 15. 5 volts, 11 and 22. And then 24 volts from the control power supply, pin 16, and then our common, pin five. That's what it takes to get motion out of a DMM Technologies DYN4 drive and servo motor. Uh, again, I'm not gonna go into e-stop relays and things like that, power to it. I'm just gonna have 120 volts to it, but uh, that's what we need to get wired up. Whether you decide to make your own or whether, again, I, I suggest that you just buy the flying lead cable from DMM Technology that has this, the connector wired up, there's a cable, and it just has these leads. So all you have to do is land them. That's the safe bet. Saves yourself the aggravation of soldering onto the solder cups of a DV25, miswiring something or burning something up. When we go to the PC, there'll be a radio button for DYN2 slash DYN4. You will select that. It will automatically populate. As of today, the 1st of October of 2018, there are two changes you're gonna to have to make to get this motor to move. The first one being on input five, the drive fault input, it'll say normally closed. You need to change that to normally open, okay? When Dyn4 faults, it actually closes the circuit instead of being closed all the time. So it's a normally open circuit and Dyn4 it's gonna remain that way just by their design. So you have to change input five to normally open. The other thing you need to change under the advanced axis tab, that's, there's an inversion table at the top of that screen. You need to invert the enables of the drives that you're using. If you're using XYZ, invert drives axis one, two, three. If you're using a lathe and you're just doing the first two, then just invert the first two. But you have to invert it. If you don't invert it, you're not gonna get motion. And we'll go over that on the bench. All right, so let's go to the bench. And uh, I've already got a Dyn4 pre-wired, just like we did here, but I wanna kinda go over it, and I wanna go over the setup on 
the CNC 12 Acorn Wizard. Here we are back at the bench, and you'll have to excuse, I'm in really tight quarters here, but this is the best I can do. So I'm using a DB25 male breakout board, okay? It's wired just like we did on the dry erase board exercise. And you'll see it's numbered, the pins are numbered, or the terminals are numbered that correspond with the pins. So it's, it's wired exactly like we've got it on the dry erase board, that's important to know. And that's why I decided to do the dry erase board exercise because it would be too hard to wire this up and you get anything valuable out of it. If you look over here to the, the power connector, you'll see where I have just a cord so I can power up Dyne 4. I've got L1 is black, L2 is white, and you'll see I have jumpers going to R and S just to power up the drive, okay? This, this cable here, this plug, is the encoder off the motor. The motor is right here. And then the, the motor power, I don't know if you can see that, but it's right here. This is the motor power connector, and this connector is pre-wired to the cable. And then my motor power ground is uh, grounded right here to the corner of DYN4, and then the next one in, I have my AC power cord grounded there as well. Okay? Let's take a look at Acorn. Okay, here's the Acorn power supply. Hopefully you can see that again, my apologies. Got a lot going on here. But, there's the Acorn power supply. We got L, line, neutral, so AC plus, AC minus. We got chassis ground. We have V2, V2 on, this is the power supply that Centroid supplies, is 24 volts. Then we have common, and then we have V1, that's our five volts. I'm using a red wire for carrying the five volts. And then let's take a look over here at Acorn. We got chassis ground. The next terminal over is common. And then the next terminal is another common and then 24 volts and 24 volts. Yellow is 24, black is ground, and then green is chassis ground, okay? And then, uh, over here I'm using a, a cable to carry the step, direction, the enable, or the common signals over to the uh, DB25. Here you can see the, the, the wiring. I just used it to carry those signals over here. And then again, here's the red wire. That's our five volts with the jumper from 11 to 22. Okay, so this is pre-wired and Acorn is pre-wired, so that pretty much covers wiring it up. Now let's go ahead and fire up the software. We have to program the uh, DYN4. Um, another thing about programming is setting up a, a DYN4 drive and DYN2 drive is go to DMM Technologies YouTube channel. They also have a little video there on setting one of these up for uh, Acorn. It's good information so make sure you watch it. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and fire up the computer and I'll go over this with you. Okay, before we get started, I want to show you the, the, the PC here. You'll see there's a USB cable. This is special that connects to the, the data port, which is connector JP2 on the DIN4. This is how you program the drive. So you have to buy this separate. You have to buy this cable separate from uh, DMM Technologies. Make sure you order it so you can program your drive, but you're going to need it. Okay? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna program the DYN4. It's already programmed, but I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and show you. All right, so that's as big as the screen gets. The first thing that you have to do is you need to connect to the drive. And you wanna detect the COM port. Oh, could not detect the COM port. Let me unplug the USB cable. My drive's powered up. I'm gonna plug it back in. Let's try this again. Okay, here we go. Possible COM port on COM3. So we go click OK. We're gonna select three, and we're gonna set the COM port. COM port successful. Now you'll see down here it says connected. 
That is important, okay? Now let's go to servo setting. And it says select DYN2 or DYN4. Well, we're working with DYN4, so we select that one. All right. Um, the first thing you want to do is let's read from the drive. So there's a, there's a button here, and let's click read. Okay, it says drive status, servo on position. That's because a motor rotor, the motor rotor is locked and it's holding and it's on position. Now, if we want to do a simple test to see if the uh, motor's working up here, when it, when it defaults, it'll say RS-232. That is so that we can communicate between the PC and the motor. Because I changed from pulse dir to RS-232, I have to save that to the drive. So I'm gonna save it. And it says all parameters saved right here, okay? So now I should be able to um, run my motor manually. And I'm gonna put my pointer on the slider, I'm gonna hold the left button, and then I'm just gonna drag it over. So as I do that, I'll show you that the motor is running. That is the first step in bench testing. There you see the motor with the blue flag on it. Okay, now I'm gonna drag the slider over. And there you see it's running, okay? I'm gonna run it up. So that's, that's the first part of this. Is here we can tell, we know that DYN4 is communicating with that motor. Let's go back to our screen. The other thing I want you to do is where it says uh, gear number, I want you to change that to 2000. I've already done that and I've changed line number to 2000. This one I'm not 100% sure of, I'm asking, um, DMM about its significance, but gear number is 2000. That means that in quadrature, it's going to take 8,000 counts to turn that motor shaft one turn. All right? So just remember that. Change this to 2000. The other thing is, don't make this mistake. So let, let's, let's do this. Let's just go through it and let's do it. Let's do, put 2000. That's there. And then where it says RS-232, Remember, you have to put it in pulse dir. That's step and direction mode. The DYN4 drive can take different types of inputs. We're using step and direction, so you must put it in pulse dir mode. So at this point, you have to remember to save it. So we're gonna save it. Saving parameters, all saved. Let's read from the drive and make sure. All right, there we are. Still on position. We're in pulse dir, we got 2,000 lines, and that's gonna to equate to 8,000 counts to turn that motor one revolution. Okay, so we're gonna exit this, we're gonna exit this software. Now we're gonna start the wizard. All right, we're gonna select DMM. You see you can ch check multiple radio buttons here, but we're working with DMM, Dyne 2, Dyne 4, we're using a Dyne 4, all right? So we're gonna select that first. The next thing we're gonna do is under your, because we don't have limit switches hooked up, I want you to change all these to normally open or turn them off. In other words, you go in here and select unused. Let's do that. We'll take this one. We're gonna set unused, scroll down, unused. This one, scroll down. Here we go, this one. Same thing. If you leave these alone and they're set to normally closed, you're gonna get a fault. So normally these are all set to normally closed. But now since we have them to unuse, that's the way it is. Now, you recall earlier I said under drive okay, when you select DMM, you notice here also it's changed to custom because we've changed these. When you select this initially, it's going to take drive OK and it will show as being normally closed. This is what you're going to see when you select this radio button. This needs to be changed to normally open. If you don't, you're going to get a drive fault from the get-go. We're not using a probe. Let's go ahead and turn that off. We'll take it, oops, no part shoot there. We'll make that one unused, probe tripped. We'll make that one unused. 
Okay, and then my e-stop. I do not have a physical e-stop button at this time. I'm going to use virtual control panel's e-stop. So I'm going to change this to normally open. All right. Over here, none of this really applies um, for our bench test. All right, now the next thing we need to do is go to axis configuration. All right, I'm only using one axis, so I have turned off axis two and axis three, okay? We uh, are using, we set up the gear, the gear in the DMM software to 2000, so we're gonna change this to 8000. In quadrature, that's what it's gonna take 8,000 counts to turn the uh, motor one revolution. If we command a one inch move, that motor will turn one revolution. So it just makes it easier to see things. Uh, max jog rate, you can leave this stuff alone if you want. Well, now we're gonna head and write the settings to CNC control configuration. So again, we, because we set things at 2,000, you set this to 8,000 steps per revolution. Overall turns ratio, we're gonna do one, just so we can see it. The max rate, fast jog rate, you can leave it. Okay, the other thing that you need to do is go up here to the advanced axis configuration, and you need to check the enable for the axis you're using. We're just doing X, so we're gonna check this one. Also, under step rate, DYN4 drives take uh, 400,000 steps a second. There's 200,000, 400,000. When you select the DYN2 and DYN4 radio button, it will set this to default. Under axis inversion, make sure you check the box to invert the enable signal. That's important or you won't get any motion. So we're gonna write the settings. We say yes. Settings saved. All right, so we've written the PLC to CNC 12. Let's go into CNC 12 mil. Okay guys, this is the main screen of CNC 12. And if you look here, there's the dialog box right here. You notice there are no messages, so everything looks good to go. Emergency stop detected, emergency stop released, reset cleared. And then right here it says machine home not set. It says jog all access to their home positions, press cycle start to set machine home. Uh, I obviously, we're bench testing, but to zero out this DRO, we're just going to hit cycle start, which is pressing the cycle start button right here. Machine home set, zero, and then our DRO is zeroed out. Um, like I said, I don't have a physical e-stop, so I'll just use the uh, reset button on virtual control panel. And that looks good. Everything looks good here. We don't have any errors. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because we're only using X, I'm going to jog the motor by pressing a virtual control panel. You notice here it's in continuous mode. The LED on incremental is out, so we're in continuous mode. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I, this is not a touch screen, so I'm going to use my mouse to uh, press it and uh, my motor is jogging. Jog it back here. So that looks good. Um, going to MDI and I'm going to do a G zero X zero and then press cycle start and that should get me back move, motors move back to zero. So uh, I'm going to swing you over to the uh, motor and uh, let you take a look at that. So I'm just going in the X plus direction and you can see it's, it's uh, turning. Go to X minus, it's going in the opposite direction. All right, so I'm going to do an MDI call. I'm gonna do a G zero X zero. That's a rapid move back to zero. And it's going back. All right, now I'm gonna turn this motor a little bit. You'll see the flag is pointing almost at 12 o'clock, all right? So I am going to go into MDI, which is F3, and I'm gonna command a G0X1. That's a rapid move in one inch, so we should see the motor turn one revolution if we've got things set up properly. 
Hopefully you can see that. So now I'm just going to execute that. One revolution. In the DMM software, we set the gear number to 2000. And in the Acorn software, we set it to 8000. It's a quadrature uh, signal. So it requires four times the number of encoder counts per evolution to turn that. So four times 2000 is 8000. That's where we got that. All right. Let's do an X. Let's do an X2 inches. So then we'll do a cycle start. It's another revolution. Okay. Now we're going to go back to zero. So right now we are at two inches on the display. Now we're going to go back to zero. And it should turn two revolutions to get to zero. So I'm going to do it on MDI. I'm going to do a G zero X zero cycle start. One, two. There you go. Okay, guys, that's a basic overview on setting up DYN4 to get just basic movement out of it. Um, as I always mentioned before, it's always best that you bench test all your components before belting anything, before mounting anything on your machine. It's far easier to work on the bench with wiring and that sort of stuff before you put it on the machine. So that's what I do. I bench test everything, set it all up, and then it goes to the machine. So that drive and that motor is actually ready to go. It's, that one would be ready to mount up. Um, because of space, I can't put the other motors on there. So what I'll do is I'll take this, this uh, motor and drive combination. I'll box it back up. And I have two more um, to uh, program. I'll pro using the, the DMM software, I'll program it up. And I'll just use the same program. Centroid CNC 12 is all set up. I'll use the same program to test it. If it's good, I'll put that one back and I'll get the other one programmed with the DMM software. Again, I'll unplug my little DB25 breakout board and plug it on the next DYN4 uh, drive and motor combination and away I go. I hope you guys found this video useful. Um, I, I don't monetize on YouTube. Uh, you know, you can give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever. I prefer a thumbs up I, if you found it useful. I spend a lot of time making these videos for users like yourself and myself. I hope it helps you out. Um, so that's it. Until next time, uh, so long. Be safe. Enjoy uh, tinkering around in your shop and get your motor going, uh, get your machine going. And if when you when you get your machine going. Uh, running under Acorn CNC 12, please post a video or pictures on the success stories uh, forum on the CNC uh, users forum. That way others can see and they get inspired to, to uh, uh, try and uh, get a machine going. Uh, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from my videos that has helped people and encouraged people to give it a try and I appreciate that. Uh, it means a lot to me. It helps me keep going on this sort of stuff. I mean, I'm getting lots of inquiries um, for help, and I always point people to the forums because I can always answer a question to one person privately, but if we can have that dialogue on the forums, then many people get the benefit of that information, and it stays in the forum, and people can use the search engine and try and find something similar. So uh, that's where I prefer to answer questions. And I'm not perfect. I don't know everything there is to know about this stuff. It's just you know a couple of years of experience working with Acorn uh, as one of their beta testers and the software and helping the team at, at uh, Centroid improve it and working with the users. Uh, to try and help them uh, get unstuck and this video was meant to be one of those videos. It's a, it was supposed to be a quickie video but I think it turned into a 30 minute or so video. Anyway, we'll talk to you guys soon. Again, enjoy, have fun in your garage and CNC stuff, CNC controls pretty cool. I hope you convert some machines. Again, enjoy, we'll talk to you soon.